Chapter 14 The Fascinating Childhood of India's Missile Man This is an inspiring story of India's president also known as the Missile Man that is APJ Abdul Kalam So this is his childhood story So let's start Surrounded by the sea on all sides the highest point on the island was the hill Gandha Madhana Parvata On top of the hill was a temple dedicated to Hanuman who is believed to have leapt across the ocean to Lanka from that point Hurry up Rama Kalam wait for me Hey Shiva beat you The young Kalam often raced up the hill with his friends Rama Nada Shastri Arvindam and Shiva Prakashan So this is just the childhood story of our late president apj abdul kalam and he used to live close to this hill on which there was a temple and they would these friends three friends would race up to the hill once on top they would flop flap down and enjoy the panoramic view of the town we can see for miles from here look shiva those boats on the beach look like colorful little toys and the temple gopuram is like a giant towering over the trees so they would enjoy the scene from there because they could see till far on from on top of the hill and the temple top also they could see they could see the boats far off and it was a very beautiful view suddenly look there flamingos and suddenly they saw the birds flamingo birds flying across which again looked a beautiful view how beautiful they are and how gracefully they fly one day the science teacher talked to the class about how birds flew but whatever he taught no one understood he said after telling them all about the birds how they fly he asked the students understood children everyone said no sir because it was not practically done so they couldn't understand how birds fly so the teacher took the students for a lesson at the sea shore to give them a practical example and practical feel of how the birds fly he went to them he showed them how the sea gulls flew he explained what the birds did to flap their wings and the role of the tail to navigate the flight path standing at the seashore that day kalam was hooked that means he was staring he was very interested at how the teacher explained while the birds were flying how the birds used their wings how they flapped their wings what was the use of the tail to navigate and to change direction and their flight however all these things interested him a lot he developed a strong desire to do something with the science of flight so that is the age at which when he was very small when he developed a desire to and an interest to work in the field of science and flight the flight of flight science of flight Kalam's simple and beautiful childhood abruptly came to an end in the year 1939 when the world war II broke. The great powers of the world got divided into two camps. 
the allies and the axis the deadliest conflict of the world involved 30 nations and claimed millions of lives it lasted six terrible years so his simple life abdul kalam's simple childhood life came to an end that simplicity and that peaceful life that he was leading came to an end when the world war ii broke there were 30 nations involved they were divided into two groups and they were fighting each other and the world war lasted for six years india was not directly impacted but because britain was involved in the war and india was then a colony of the british empire prices skyrocketed and there was a scarcity of things of daily needs such as food clothes and other essentials the people who were already struggling to make ends meet such as kalam's family were further affected so though india was not directly involved in the world war too but because we were uh, india a country was a british colony at that time the britishers ruled here so we were affected all the basic needs like the clothing the food and all all that prices became very very high due to war and kalam's family was already not very rich they were like quite poor it was difficult to meet to make ends meet at that time also and it became more difficult kalam tried to help in his own way for some strange reason the war had led to a sudden demand of tamarind seeds happily kalam would collect the bags full of them and sell them to a local grocery store he would get paid one anna that is one sixteenth of a rupee at that time it was an important amount of money so whatever at that time the tamarind seeds had become very expensive suddenly and Kalam would collect it and sell it to a grocery store and where he would be paid one hour. Just eight years old then, Kalam also took up another job that his cousin Samuddin got him. Kalam had to collect newspapers thrown from a train and distribute them among the eager readers of the town. So another job that he was doing other than selling the tamarind seeds was collecting paper, newspaper which was thrown from the train and distributing it to the people who were interested in reading it. And that was how his cousin, a cousin of his helped him in that. And he was hardly eight years old at that time. So along with his daily routine of going for mathematics coaching, studying the Quran Sharif and going to school, Kalam also now had to become a wage earner and help out the family at this tender young age. So imagine at the age of 8, almost your age, he was doing two jobs, two part-time jobs studying maths going having an extra study of maths and also going to school and also over that studying the quran sharif so that was a lot for an eight year old child but he was brave enough to do that and shoulder that responsibility after the quran lesson was over he would sprint to the station that means he would run to the station after the quran lessons to collect the newspapers just in time and you could hear the train coming he would reach on time to collect the newspaper by then Samudin's man would have quickly jettisoned the newspaper bundles onto the platform Kalam would quickly gather them and sort them according to his delivery route 
so till that time samuddin his cousin's uh, man a uh, person whoever was collecting the newspapers from the train he would quickly take down take them down from the train and kalam would sort them out according to the route in which he had to give the newspapers for an hour after that he would tear down the dusty lane the dusty by lanes of rameshwaram distributing the papers so for one hour after that for one hour he would be distributing the papers all along the route which he was given to distribute the papers hmm not not i'm full one more idli son eat now for my sake by the time he reached home it would be past 8 am hungrily wolfing down the breakfast his mother had laid out for him so that was early in the morning when after the uh, quran studies he would go to collect the papers and then come back home by 8 o'clock and have his breakfast before going to school and his mother would make idlis or anything like something nice south indian dish to feed him so that he could fill up his stomach and go to school then and he would also hungrily eat because he had worked hard from morning from the time he would get up once the school was over kalam had to do rounds of the customers again this time it was to collect the dues which he had to hand over to samudin later in the evening so after the school was over then after distributing after the quran studies early in the morning he would go to distribute the papers then after that he would come home have his breakfast and then go to school and then after that he would go for another round to the customers to collect the money whatever was due for the newspapers and hand it over to his cousin samudin in the evening his responsibility fulfilled he would have his dinner do his homework by the flickering light of the kerosene lamp as they had no electricity in those days and then dog tired crawl into bed so after all this responsibility all of all the extra work that he was doing also selling the tamlin seeds he would come back home have his dinner do his homework by the little lamps the kerosene lamps at that time which were there because there was no electricity available at that time and by the end of all this he would be dog tired dog tired means he would be extremely tired and went to go to sleep sometimes he put his head in his mother's lap and as she gently stroked it tears would roll down his eyes mother would continue stroking his head for she understood that her son's tears were due to the sheer exhaustion of a little boy trying to step into a man's shoes well before his time so he would sometimes lay his head on his mother's lap and would cry because he used to be so tired and mother understood that her son was actually so tired because he was trying to be big and and responsible for more than his age allowed him so it was a really incredible thing that he did for that age and he became a real big name world name the missile man of india and also our president so children this is a very inspiring story of a person who worked so hard in his childhood and yet was so intelligent educated himself and made a name for himself